Tito got hits, and without hits, you got nothing. Stepping up in the club, like what up, don't dog, y'all all right? Then hook up with the little honey, I've been trying to holler at the whole night. Like, babe, where you going next? Wanna grab a little bit of breakfast, then head back to my crib to do my favorite thing. Yummy. Hi, my name's Tim Pickering, and I'm the co-founder of Gemini Records and the executive producer of our first CD entitled Thug Elegance. Alien minds had begun to control her. His wife was terrified and believed that alien creatures inside the craft were jumbling her thoughts and confusing her mind. She testified that it was these creatures in the strange craft that confounded her thinking. After a mile or so driving under alien influence, Mr. Mendoza was commanded to stop. He exited the vehicle and began walking along these very tracks in a direct path towards the bright glowing ball in the sky. The following is what Mr. Mendoza claims happened that night. Era como un panque con una banana en el cielo. Y yo yo agarré los binoculares de mi hijo. I grabbed my son's binoculars. Y salí del camión. And I ran out of the car. Through the binoculars, I could see what looked like monsters. Like monkey monsters. In a large window. You are a good man, Peter Stepanovich. Why do I feel like I'm reading an unwritten chapter of Dostoevsky every time I speak with you? I don't know. Anna was very impressed with the way you play with her children yesterday. Anna is always impressed. I'm her husband's boss. He will be a wonderful father. I tell Billy how she had to spit at some. We've had to stop. Some men only warm up to the idea when they hold their son in their arms. We've had the stop. I want a child. Melina. I know you would be a fantastic father. Melina. Hello. Yes, Armin. So make him do their part. Enlighten them. Where are you now? I understand. My wife Doris and I were driving a sizable road in the Mojave Desert on a trip. We came up on a, a fork in the road. And I remember seeing a, a burst of white light right in front of the windshield of our car. Next thing I remember, I'm lying off to the side of the road near the car. I had numerous cuts on my hands, my arms, my forehead. I had a huge gash on my leg. My wife Doris was not returned with me. I wrapped my leg and limped around the desert rocks till 4 a.m. After the long search, I gave up. Drove myself to the nearest hospital where a doctor put my leg back together. I don't remember anything that happened to me during the abduction. Only a few nights later, I had some dreams. Dreams of being fastened to a cold, hard surface and surrounded by tall, unknown creatures. They surrounded me and they talked, but I could not understand them. But they looked at me, frightened me, and abused my person. In these dreams, I understood they controlled me and there was nothing I could do to stop them from doing what they were doing. They placed a needle in my thigh and they put a large object over me. It, 
it vibrated in some it weird way. In some weird way, hummed a bit. I don't remember seeing Doris anywhere near me or on the craft. Somehow I knew they had done the same to her, these creatures. They probably tortured her to a point where she couldn't take their abuses and died. I'll never escape that recurring dream. Doherty's never found my wife.